Have you ever had to edit a whole bunch of voiceover audio only to discover that it's an incredibly tedious process? Well, watch till the end of this video because you'll learn the five steps to edit voiceover faster than anyone else. Hey, I'm Robert Back from Learn Audio Engineering and editing audiobooks has been keeping me busy the last couple of months. I was sick of spending so much time editing audio that I put together this step-by-step -step system to speed up my workflow and now I wanna share it with you. Our goal for this process is to trim these clips all at once so that all we have to do is listen through and remove any false starts or mistakes. So to begin, step number one, we're gonna use strip silence. That is control plus X. The first setting we're gonna take a look at is the threshold. For this, I set it to the minimum. You're gonna wanna lower your threshold to the point where Logic starts making a decent amount of cuts, and this will make sure that every sentence or statement will be its own contained audio region. For this chapter, I set my threshold at minus 41 dB and it created 288 regions. Next, we're gonna set the minimum silence to 0.15 seconds. This is the minimum amount of time that Logic will determine as a pause. Next, for the pre-attack, we're gonna do 0.08 seconds. This is the amount of audio region that's going to be left before you start speaking. Next, for the post-release, we're gonna do 0.1 second, a little bit longer here. Again, this is the amount of the audio region that will be left after you stop speaking. Now, I found that these settings worked for a natural speaking cadence. If you find the pacing a little bit abrupt, you can always go in and make the post-release a little bit longer, but remember that you can always go in and extend some of those bits of silences to help with the phrasing. The settings that I'm using here are optimized for audiobook dialogue. The next setting we want to use is clicked on by default. This is search zero crossing. So based on your pre-attack and your post-release settings, it's going to bump the edges of the newly created region to the nearest zero crossing. So basically it'll automatically snap your region start and end points to the quietest part of the signal to minimize any clicks or pops in the recording. All right, now that we've got all our regions separated, in step two, we're going to select all our audio regions and we're going to shuffle them over using the command Option, right square bracket. This will push all of your audio regions together against the right side of your session, which I admit is not ideal. I'd rather use option left square bracket to sandwich everything against the beginning of the session. That would make a whole lot more sense. However, for some reason, Logic doesn't respect the audio region boundaries when using this command. The regions will just smush together and it's pretty unusable. I've contacted Apple about this and they were unaware about the bug, so hopefully it gets patched in future updates. So now we're gonna take all of our audio and we're gonna drag it over to the left side of the session and there's one more step before we start playback. Step three, you're gonna select all your audio regions and then go to the inspector tab on the left side of the screen. Under the regions tab, click more at the bottom and enter a value of 100 for fade in and for fade out. Again, you can adjust these to taste, but guys, in three steps, we've got all of our audio chopped, faded, and ready to go for step four. Now you're gonna go through, listen to the audio, and remove any mistakes or false starts. My last really quick tip, tip number five, is to stay in drag mode, shuffle left. This allows for the fastest workflow because as you delete a region, the rest of the regions are just gonna snap into its place so that you have a continuous flow of audio dialogue. And I'm gonna include one last tip that makes this entire process lightning fast. Right click on your control bar, that's the top center of your Logic session, select Customize Control Bar and Display, and make sure to select VeraSpeed. VeraSpeed allows you to play back audio at much faster rates. Just remember to turn it off before exporting your bounce. Personally, I like to set the very speed anywhere from plus 50%, anywhere to plus 80%, and it really does make that world of difference. So as I said at the beginning, these five steps will massively speed up your voiceover editing process and hopefully make it a little bit less tedious for you. So if it did, leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to help out the channel. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.